Hi and welcome to Laura Talks MS. I hope you guys are keeping well. In last week's video I talked about Lemtrada and my treatment with Lemtrada and in this week's video I want to talk about post Lemtrada and some of the secondary autoimmune diseases that can actually occur after treatment. So secondary autoimmune diseases are when the immune system decides to attack other parts of the body and the most common autoimmune disease after having Lemtrada is a thyroid problem and that can affect about 20 to 30 percent of people who actually take the treatment. For me I didn't experience most of the common um, side effects from Lemtrada. I had something or I had a few very different things. I'll put them in the miscellaneous pile but I'm just going to talk about two that I've had today in this video and I'll go on to explain the rest in a different video. But all these disease modifying drugs basically do pretty much the same thing and they're changing our bodies, they're getting rid of our immune system and I have found that I've researched a little bit about some of these other drugs and I've noticed that some of the side effects that I've had can show up on some of these other drugs as well. So even though I'm talking about Lemtrada, I think that it might be interesting to kind of look into these as a whole for disease modifying drugs because it may be something that can show up um, later on in different treatments. The first thing that happened to me um, was that I started losing hair and a lot of it as well. I had the whole front of my hair here, the whole follicles just died so it wasn't that I just had patches missing, I had the whole lot basically just, just basically left and it developed after two years after my second round of having Lemtrada and it was um, it was a really stressful time because I've always had really healthy hair, I've always looked after it, I couldn't understand the correlation between why I was losing my hair and could it be something to do with the treatment because even though it's chemotherapy treatment it's non-radioactive and you're not supposed to lose your hair on it. So I was sent off for tests for my iron, I think I was sent off for folic acid tests and I was given iron as a vitamin and just um, made to see if that would help the hair grow back. I think it was about a year and a half to two years that I had my hair like that. It was a really stressful time. I, I had to I felt like I had to hide my hair under hats. I felt like I had to go to wig shops to try to hide my hair under wigs. But really in the end, I think I just ended up living with it because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how it had happened. I didn't know why it had happened until I decided to do and delve and do some research into why I'd lost my hair. And it does in fact, uh, show that having alentuzumab distorts the hair follicles and it does or can make you lose hair. Okay so I'm just going to read this snippet that I found on the website of the American Academy of Neurology and it says here that hair loss is an autoimmune disease that can involve focal or multifocal patches of non-scarring hair loss and is believed to be caused by CD4 and T lymphocytes attacking the hair follicle. So that was taken from something that I've read, but I've read lots on it. So that's just some one of the versions of um, evidence that has found to be reported on hair loss with this treatment. Now, this is not to say that everybody is going to lose their hair on disease modifying drugs or Lemtrada, but when I researched about it, there was enough research and um, information there to say that it had happened to a few people. So there's evidence there that there is correlation between the drug and hair loss. The second thing that I experienced, and you know, people may say, well, 
it's not a big deal, but I think that when you've never experienced anything like that before and it's over your skin, it's an issue. So it's something called vitiligo or some people know it as hyperpigmentation, but I noticed it, I would say probably five years after my first infusion. So that would be four years after my second infusion. And it was, it started off as patches on my face, just brown patches would just show up everywhere. And I just didn't know what it was. People would tease me and say I had chocolate over my face. And because it was actually really, really bad um, when you look back at pictures and I will put some up now so that you can see just what I'm talking about. So as you can see on the pictures, there's quite a lot of dark pigmentation there around the cheeks, around the lips and basically all over the face. And that lasted for a long time. I had that pigmentation for a good, I would say four, four years before really I knew what to do with it because again it was something I thought where's this come from I didn't really know what it was about it was more probably a cosmetic issue than something that was bothersome and as a young girl you know you do worry about these things because you already have enough on your plate to worry about so I would go and buy the heaviest makeup that I could and cake it on because every day I had to go into work and I had to face people like that and it really knocked my confidence and just getting over the hair thing that was already a difficult thing and then I had something else on top of that to deal with as well and it's just there's a lot to there's a lot going on here it was time to bite the bullet and do something about this so after a long four years living with this I decided to actually go see somebody about this and a dermatologist and for any of you guys out there who've got vitiligo whether you've got it because of a disease modifying drug or you just have it because of any other reason this is the best treatment that I've ever had and I swear by it I'll put before and after pictures up. I'm just going to read you the snippet that I found on a website which talks about vitiligo and it says that it's a T-cell mediated secondary autoimmune disease and vitiligo is sometimes associated with autoimmune diseases including MS. It's T-cell driven autoimmune disorder with CD8 and T-cells responsible for destruction. So that's where we, it was talking about treatment with alumtuzumab or Lemtrada. I know it sounds really silly, in the grand scheme of things, I have MS and people are probably thinking, why am I worried about a bit of pigmentation on my skin? But it's because, of, because it's everything, it's, you know, a collection of things and um, it's the way that you feel about stuff and I don't know if people can understand or relate to this. But anyway, going on to the treatment, the treatment is called Obagi. I did have a really bad time with this treatment, um, but I persevered with it because it's not the easiest treatment to go through and it takes a whole year in order for your cells um, to regrow and for your skin to regrow back to how it was but I've done it and you know I feel I feel much happier and I yeah so that's my dog's barking by the way if you can hear that <laughs> but don't ever be afraid to speak up if something happens if you know there's something that's a little bit abnormal because it's important to get these things out there because they are important and what you may see as something a bit strange maybe you don't want to say don't be afraid to speak out because who knows it could be something that could be helped and picked up straight away 
But I just wanted to put this video out there really because I don't know if it will help anybody. I don't know if anybody's going through a similar thing. But as always, just pop your comments down below if you've got anything to share or if you've got anything that you want to ask me. I hope you guys all have a fab day and I will catch you soon. See you later.